This video demonstrates how to find journal impact using the database Scopus. First, what is journal impact? Journal impact is how we measure the influence a publication has had on its research field. Several metrics are used to measure the impact of an academic journal. They use different methods for calculating impact, but they are all based on how frequently articles published in that journal are cited. Here are a few common metrics. The first is site score, which you can find with Scopus. Site score looks at the average number of citations received by a journal divided by the number of documents indexed on Scopus during a three year time frame. Then there's also something called site score percentile. This measure takes that site score and compares it to other journals in the same field of research. A percentile score of 80%, for example, means that a journal has a higher site score than 80% of other journals in that field. Next is SciMago Journal Rank, also abbreviated as SJR. SJR is similar to site score, but it uses a weighted average of citation frequency. SJR looks at how frequently documents in a journal are cited, but it uses an algorithm that gives higher weight to citations from journals with high SJR scores. Finally, there's impact factor. Impact factor measures the average number of citations received by a journal in the past two years, divided by the total number of articles published in that journal during that time frame. Impact Factor is only available through a database called Web of Science, which is something that we do not have access to at Towson because it's prohibitively expensive. I mention it here though because it's a popular metric that you might encounter throughout your studies, but it's very similar to these other metrics. They're all just different ways of measuring the same thing. There are a few ways that journal impact is useful. The first is evaluating the quality of a source. When you encounter any information source, whether it's a scholarly source or a background source, you should evaluate that source's credibility and relevance to your own research. Journal impact is one criterion you may use to evaluate a source. If an article is published in a journal that scores highly on its journal impact metrics, that can increase your confidence about the quality of that source. Journal impact is also useful when you are choosing where to publish your research. When you have completed a research study, your goal should be to publish it in a high quality journal. Publishing in a high impact journal will improve the visibility of your work and will increase the likelihood that your work will be cited by other researchers. It will also look great on your CV. Finally, journal impact is used by libraries for making decisions about their collections. Journal and database subscriptions are extremely expensive. The Cook Library spends almost a million dollars on them each year. So no library can afford to subscribe to every academic journal that's out there. Journal impact metrics can help librarians make decisions about which journals they should include in their collections. So how do we find journal impact? One way is checking the homepage of an individual academic journal. Sometimes, if a journal is particularly impactful, it will prominently display impact factor or other metrics on its homepage to persuade researchers to subscribe to their journal or publish within it. You can usually find a journal's homepage through a quick Google search. Just put the title of the journal in quotation marks for best results. But if something isn't listed on the journal's homepage or if you want more information about how a journal ranks in comparison to others in the field, you can use the database Scopus, specifically the Sources tab. So let's hop over to Scopus now and take a look at how this process works. Here is the main search page in Scopus. To find journal impact metrics, select Sources from the top center of the screen. This will take you to a page where you can look up information about the most impactful journals in a particular field, or you can look up the impact of one specific journal. Let's start by looking up the impact of one specific journal. To do that, I will use this drop down menu on the left where it currently says subject area, and I will select title. Then I can type in the name of the journal that I want information about. I'll use PLOS1 as an example. 
So I'll start typing in the name of my journal. And as you start typing, you may notice a drop down menu will appear with lists of sources that are similar to what you're typing in. If you see the source you're looking for in that drop down menu, click on it to be taken to a results page. If that drop down doesn't appear, simply enter in the full name of the journal you're looking for and then click on the blue Find Sources button to the right of the search bar to get to this page. Then scroll down to the results section of your page and usually you will just have one result corresponding to the journal that you typed in. You can look at the different columns in this results section to get information about different journal metrics. Site score will be listed first, then percentile, and you can see a number of other metrics as well. You can see even more metrics by clicking on the arrow on the right side of these different columns. And then you can see things such as SJR. You can also view metrics for previous years. By default, Scopus is going to display information about the most recent year for which they have impact data, but if you were curious about how impactful a journal was in a previous year, you could select one of those from the drop-down menu and then consider how that compares to the current number. So that's how you look up impact metrics in Scopus for one specific journal. If you want to see how a journal compares to others in the field, then you may wish to look at a ranked list of journals. To do that, I'll scroll back to the top and I am going to click the X next to where it says plus one here to reset my search. Then this time, instead of searching by title, I'm going to search by subject area. I can do that by using the same drop down menu on the left and selecting subject area. Then I click inside the search box where it says enter subject area and I can scroll through this very long list of subjects indexed in Scopus and select any topic area of interest. Let's say I am doing research in genetics. I can select genetics and then Click on the apply button at the bottom right of that drop down menu and now I will get a list of the most impactful journals in the field of genetics. By default they will be put in order from the highest site score to the lowest site score as this is the main metric that is used by Scopus. However if I was interested in a different journal metric, let's say SJR is my favorite, I could use this arrow again to get that metric to display for me, and then if I click on the name of that column, that will put my results in a different order, this time in terms of the highest SJR to the lowest SJR. So you'll find that although these metrics use slightly different algorithms, you aren't likely to see a lot of major changes in the order of your results if you look at different ones. They really are just slightly different ways of measuring the same thing. So that's a basic overview of how you can look up journal impact information with the database Scopus. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, the Cook Library is happy to help. Visit bit.ly slash tu ask a librarian for details on how to contact a librarian through chat, email, text message, or individual appointment.